Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I take a simple song idea and start the pre-production process to create a full song. So myself and Jack Rubinacci have been working on a song together, but the song idea isn't quite finished. And what we'd like to do, or what I'd like to do with this, is to play around with some different ideas. So what I thought I'd do is to show you how I start off sort of pre-production on a song before the song becomes its entirety. And what I mean by that is, is this is gonna be a very rough demo version of the song that I'm gonna create before I take the band into the studio and we record the proper version. When I start song ideas, I normally start in a program called Persona Studio One. And there's a reason for this, which I'm gonna explain and will become more apparent later on. But what I've got so far, as you'll see on the screen, I've got a basic sort of drum groove uh, and a bass idea. So that's the whole structure of the song. Now, what I can do in Studio One is to mess around with the structure, but I'll show you that in a minute. What I'm gonna do first of all is just to record a rough guitar part. Now, again, this isn't gonna be a finished guitar part at all. This is just a rough idea. So I can hand this over to Jack Rubinacci, who's gonna be the singer on this track, and Jack can then work on the vocals and the lyrics. So the first thing I need to do here is to create a new track. Uh, and I'm gonna call this guitar idea. Now I'm gonna create a stereo track and the reason for that is that I've got my amplifier here which I'm using the Two Rock Classic Reverb Signature. I've got that plugged into a Boss Tube Amp Expander and the Tube Amp Expander is then going into my interface and the interface that I'm gonna be using today is Universal Audio Apollos. So I need to choose my input so if I click here I can go down to uh, this input that I've named here which is Boss TAE, Tube Amp Expander. The sound that I've got dialed up on the Two Rock sounds like this. It's a clean sound with a bit of breakup on it. Now I'm using the reverb that's built into the amp and I'm not too worried about the actual sound. I'm not too worried about keeping it clean when I'm recording because again, this is only gonna be a rough guitar part and I'd like to record, or I do like to record with some effects. So if I've got reverb on an amplifier, that creates a nice bit of vibe that I can record down to the track. Now when I'm recording the proper version, I'd normally be a little bit more lenient on the reverb as I don't wanna to bake too much reverb into the track and then realize in the mixing process that there's too much reverb and then I can't take it away. But anyway, here's the sound we're gonna be recording with. If I zoom into the track, you'll see that the, uh, the actual track starts on bar two. So what I need to do with this is to uh, make sure the metronome's on so it counts me in. So if I click on the metronome and let's go for a take. So there's my rough track. Now, hopefully you didn't hear, but there were some sort of dodgy chords. There's some notes ringing out that I don't really want. But to be honest, I'm not worried. At the moment, this is just the writing process. So I'm not too worried about performance or the actual take as it's all gonna get replaced in the studio later on. So let's have a listen. So 
So first of all, I'm listening back to that and it's a bit drier than I would like it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of reverb. Now, what I can do in Studio One is to choose one of my favorites, which is gonna be the UAD Lexicon 224. Now, these are plugins that you can buy for the UAD platform. And I'm just gonna drag that into my send slot there. Now already just by adding that little bit of reverb, that's really made that guitar fit into the track. Now again, as I said, I'm not too worried about everything being perfect. It's not, the bass isn't perfect because the bass is gonna be done by a proper bass player, not myself, I'm not a good bass player. And the actual track in the guitar is obviously gonna be done again when we record the bass and the real drums. But one thing I have noticed about the guitar track is that there's a little bit too much bottom end on this actual track and it's interfering with the actual bass guitar. So what I'm gonna do is just to EQ out that bottom end. So there's the rough guitar part and I'm sort of semi happy with that. That's absolutely fine to be working with. Now what I'm gonna do is to start to play around with the arrangement. Now this is the reason why I work in Persona Studio One when I'm actually arranging and writing songs because I can change around different elements of this track really, really easily. So what I'm gonna do is to click on the pencil button here and I'm gonna draw in all the different parts. Now I've labeled all the different parts of the song in the arranger track up here. So I've got my intro, first verse, pre-chorus, verse two, pre-two, chorus two, middle eight, and then the end chorus. There's a couple of great things about using Studio One that you can't really do with other DAWs or not a lot of other DAWs, and that is to use this arranger track. Now, what I can do is, for instance, if I don't want a particular verse or if I want to shorten a certain part of this song, I can do that. So I've got this lead guitar idea. So I'm gonna put it down over the first verse. So let's create another track. And uh, let's call this guitar solo. So I'm gonna record the guitar solo idea over the first verse. So let's have a quick listen. So now let me explain why I like to use Studio One for my writing and arranging because I can move around the different parts. So for instance, that guitar solo is over the first verse. It'd be quite unlikely that I'm gonna be putting a guitar solo on the first verse. It's gonna be coming after the first chorus or possibly after the middle eight. So what I'm gonna do is to move that verse and copy it before the second verse. So I can pick it up and drag it there. So now I can mute the first guitar solo. And now if I go to the end of the first chorus, I 
I've got my guitar solo. Now, say that I'm not happy with the actual tempo of this track. Now, here's another great thing about Studio One and the reason why I use Studio One for my writing and arranging. Say that I give the track to Jack Rubinacci, who's singing the track, and he says, do you know what, I like it, but it's not quick enough. Now, this is the great thing about Studio One, and you can do this with some, some of the other doors, but I can speed up or slow up the whole track, and it actually still sounds, it actually still holds the, the quality of the tracks together. It still sounds quite good. So, for instance, if I want to speed this up to 80 BPM, Or for instance, if I want to slow it down even further, say down to 60 BPM. And it still sort of holds more or less the quality of the actual recording. So let's knock it back to 71 BPM as that's the tempo I'm going to be working with. Now again, remember this is just a rough track. This is the pre-production of the actual recording that we're going to be doing in the recording studio. So again, I'm not too worried about the actual quality of the parts or how well I've played particular things. I'm just going to leave it like this. Now I can send this off to Jack Rubinacci, who's going to be singing on the track, as I said earlier, and Jack can finish off the lyrics and the melody for the track, and we can get ready to actually go and record this properly in the recording studio. Anyway, I'm Paul from The Studio Rats. I really hope you guys got something out of this. If you did get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell button, and to be notified of any future video that comes out from The Studio Rats. I'm Paul, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.